Hi everyone, uh, I hope you are awake because we have only 30 minutes to kind of cover everything that is new uh, in digital and in luxury. Um, I will just grab the remote and we should be alright. So, first thing, uh, we hear a lot about new platform. Uh, you know, from Facebook to contact you, there is a lot of possibilities. Uh, and when I say a lot, you know, we have marketing 1.0 which is basically, you know, banners, website, search engine optimization. Uh, search engine optimization, banner emailing, so there is a lot that we are pretty uh, uh, used to. Uh, okay. Uh, so, it's, it's nothing like really new, but it still exists and it's still uh, uh, working pretty well. Then, we had a lot of new tools to play with recently, uh, you know, buzz monitoring and bloggers and, and viral marketing, buzz and so on. And now there's even mobile marketing arriving. So, it's, it's not that easy if you are a communication manager, if you are a marketing manager. Uh, you know, there's so many ways you can spend your budget. And uh, most of the time, the budget is not unlimited, so it's, uh, it's pretty tough. And if we look uh, at some of, I would say, the international uh, social media platform, uh, you know, Facebook, it's, it's more than one billion uh, members. Uh, YouTube, it's, it's uh, doing like really good. So even if you're YouTube here, uh, Twitter, I know in Russia it's not that popular yet, but it, it has really exploded even in Europe. Uh, especially for TV because it's very useful to react to shows or TV shows. Uh, so it's pretty impressive. LinkedIn, which is more like, you know, for your resume and your career. Google Plus. So I would say for now, uh, not everybody's convinced. But since for opening a new Gmail account now, you're obliged to open a Google Plus account. And if you have a restaurant or a bar to manage your local page on Google, you need to have a Google Plus account, it seems. They find a way to force you to open a lot of them. I'm not saying it's very active in the platform, but you know, uh, I doubt Google won't find a way to become really good on social, so watch out. Uh, Instagram, uh, which is the next one, more than 100 million active members. Tumblr, we're going to talk about it again, Pinterest and Foursquare. So you see, and it's only a small part of them, that's the most popular. But there is a lot of them, and I think it's, it's it's kind of hard to choose, like should you be on everything, which one should you, uh, should you try, what should you say, what should you publish as a brand on them. And, you know, of course if we take the biggest one, Facebook, it's kind of crazy, it's one seventh of the world population on Facebook yet. And not only it's a lot of people, but there are half of them is connecting every day. So I think one of the success of Facebook, they found a way to uh, make you want to connect on a regular basis, you know, for your, your friend's birthday, for the news, for uh, the brand's updates, so there's a lot uh, you can do. But, you know, I think too often we tend to, uh, to keep only uh, uh, talking about the most popular one in the media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, but there's a lot of other platforms, like Tumblr, for example, which is a very easy user-friendly platform for blogging. They have had a huge growth recently, so they have more than 100 million blogs uh, uh, using uh, uh, Tumblr, and especially now we see a lot of fashion and luxury brands, because it's kind of easy to publish, you can have a pretty cool look and feel and design, for example Lacoste. Uh, I like it because they don't only talk about themselves, but it's like a, a giant mood board where they publish a lot of inspiration regarding design and, and fashion. Uh, but, you know, Instagram does the same. Uh, when um, Facebook bought them, there were only 6 million members, now there are 100 million users. So it's kind of crazy how popular this app is, and uh, we see lots of fashion luxury brands um, making competition, uh, uh, publishing uh, photos that has the hashtag of the brand, for example. And I think uh, Facebook has been very smart because they realize the youngest part of their users were more into mobile. Uh, they were not that good on mobile at the time. And so by 
By Instagram, it was a great way to get the talent behind the app and be much better on, on mobile. Uh, but, you know, like recently we heard a lot about Pinterest, uh, where it's very easy when you have visual content, so it's not really for services brand, but if you are into uh, decoration, design, fashion, shopping, then people can create collection albums of visuals they like from a brand and they can share it together so they can pin this content. So it's of interest. And uh, you know, in the US it's a lot of women, in the UK a little less, uh, but um, it's pretty popular. You know, it's nearly 50 million users worldwide, so uh, it might not be big in, in, U um, in uh, Russia yet, but uh, it's going to come probably. Like, uh, now it's one million in France, so it's, it's much smaller than the US, but it's, uh, it's coming. And if you're interested in knowing more, we have published a, a small studies on that. It's free, you can download it, uh, because I don't have enough time today to, to go much more in detail. Uh, but the thing is, there's always a new social network coming. Have you heard about Line? Any of you? So good. Two weeks ago, to be frank, I didn't, neither. Uh, but I was very surprised because suddenly I, I started getting interested into this social network that came from Asia, and they have already 100 million members. So it's kind of crazy because there is new tools that sometimes the time you, you, you get to understand it exists, it's already very popular. And there are 40 million members in Japan, so I think there are like 30 percent or 50% of people connected in Japan are uh, using it. It's uh, 12 million in Taiwan, it's 10 million in Thailand, and now they're going after all the BRICS markets, so they're probably going to come to Russia pretty soon. And it's here, it's, it's not, um, I would say, social network with an app, it's only uh, on mobile social network. So basically it's a mix of messenger and you have pretty funny emoticon, which are very kawaii, very Japanese uh, uh, type. But you should always keep an eye. I, I'm not saying jump on everything new, but it's important to keep up with what's coming because, um, let's say, people, they love to share now, so they are not going to stop, but they get bored pretty quickly from one platform to another. Remember MySpace a few years ago or other ones? So, you know, people might, if for any reason they feel Facebook is no more cool or it's not delivering what they expect, then they might move maybe for a mobile app or, or something else. On the other hand, you know, if you keep jumping and everything new, you won't build everything. So sometimes it's good to take time, choose one or two social networks, concentrate your effort on it. And you know, when you master it, maybe then start on something else. Because if you try to cover everything at the same time, it's, uh, it's going to be an issue. But we were talking about people connecting together. But interestingly, objects are going to connect together. So, uh, I don't know if you know Parrot, they were speaking last year, uh, yeah, about Forum. So last year they had a drone, so like a flying machine. So this is a new tool for this year, so it has nothing, it's not flying. But you put it in your plant pot, and basically uh, you monitor everything for you. The light, uh, how much humidity is it in the, in the earth, and it, there is a, uh, an iPhone app, and it tells you, oh, uh, so it's basically your plant is tweeting to you. It's telling you, oh, you need to water me, or no, I have too much sun, like, please put me inside, or it's too cold outside. So suddenly, I would say everything around us is starting to get smart, like the furniture, uh, the, the TV is going to get connected. So at the beginning, everybody was expecting you to plug the TV um, in the internet. Uh, but the problem is people change TV every seven years. So it will take a lot of time if we uh, wait for people to get connected TV. So it seems now we are more going not for the connected TV, but for the second screen. You can keep your old TV, even if it's black and white, but if you have an iPad, if you have a tablet that is connected to the internet, then suddenly, you know, you might have an app for the show you're watching, and so it's connecting connected people, basically, watching TV instead of connected, connected TV uh, uh, directly. But it's a lot of uh, interesting opportunities, because suddenly, let's say it's a game uh, on TV, you can have an app where people can participate, they can vote, you can develop a, sp a specific app, and it's, it's pretty fun to get Finally, interactivity with TV, because uh, on, online, on the web, everybody likes to comment on both. But, you know, cars. Cars are going to get connected pretty soon. 
uh, of course, you will be able to surf the internet, but much better than that. Your car will tell you, for example, oh, in 200 kilometers I need to um, get fixed. So I'm checking in uh, the mechanic calendar, I'm checking your calendar, I see there's three different possibilities, and uh, which one do you want to, to take for me? So your environment, your furniture, objects, buildings are going to be much smarter, and they are going to get connected to the internet. So it's going to change uh, a lot of things. And you've probably heard a little bit about Google Glass. So this is a new glass from Google, where basically it looks a bit weird, normally they're working on the design. Uh, but the idea is to basically, instead of uh, looking at your phone, and you will have augmented information all the time when uh, you will be uh, working. If you don't mind, maybe you can start the, the video on the left. Uh, yeah, no, so I started before. Uh, so it's, uh, I'm going to, to show you a small video about what it looks like. And so you know, as uh, they are already uh, uh, letting people not only apply uh, uh, on a waiting list, but apply candidates, so you need to send a, a, an application, and uh, it's going to cost $1,500. Uh, so it's going to be uh, pretty interesting, because all the time you will have like some interesting uh, feedback uh, directly from your glasses uh, um, to you, so I don't know if you get it, yeah. tickets for Mozio Gaino tonight. Where's the music section? Uh, oh, yes, this is it. Is Paul here yet? Huh. Hey dude, how's it going? Wanna go check out that new place I was telling you about? Sure. This truck's really good. Hey, just a second. Cool. Good to see you again. Thanks, man. See you, dude. So, of course, let's hope the connection with the glasses will be fast. <laughs> Otherwise, then there will be like, like here, some issues. Uh, but you see, like it's you know it's going to be a far less, and if your customers are connected all the time, if you know they can access any information, if they watch your product and suddenly they have a review from the internet and they know, oh don't buy it, it's very bad, or oh yeah buy it for cheaper, but uh, don't stay in the shop and, and come to us and give you fifty percent or five percent rebate, it's going to be much more challenging because those consumers are going to be so much smarter. So we'll be able to access everyone else's knowledge and, and opinion about uh, your product. And uh, it's, it's going to be uh, uh, much more difficult to convince them. And on the, uh, the, the positive view of Google, of course, because they want to sell you the glasses. But just imagine who's going to sell you AdWords on your, on your glasses, you know? So they're probably going to be advertising in, in your kitchen, or I don't know, they're going to pay you for that. To, to force you to watch advertising through, uh, through the Google uh, lenses. So I think it's really interesting because when we think about all this ecosystem, all this universe uh, around us, it's going to be a, a very different type of customer. We were used with social network with our users. At least we have discovered that they are ready to, to share information, opinion, but now they are, they are going to be able to do a, um, 
uh, a lot more. Uh, yeah, I need to get the memo back. Uh, so I will let you check uh, uh, the other video. You will get the slides, but it's pretty funny. It's a, it's a Japanese video trying to imagine if your wool kitchen would be full of advertising through your, through your glasses. So it's kind of a bit awful. Uh, so, but the only thing with all the platforms we have seen here is what do you publish on the platform? It's great to open social network, but you know, what do you want to say? What are you going to share? And before you were used to do maybe one or two campaigns a year, so you had three months to do this very nice movie or this very uh, well designed uh, 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 billboard. Suddenly you have to talk every day. So, you know, it's, uh, it's not 360, it's 365 marketing, so it's, it's really challenging. And, and very often this is what happens with your agency. You know, oh, yeah. Uh, let's go digital, and let's open a Facebook page, and a YouTube account, and, and Pinterest, and, and in the end, like, what are you going to say about that? So what is really important to understand is tools and technology are important, it's key to know what's going on, but it's not enough. And it doesn't make a strategy. You know, buying tools together is not a strategy, it's only uh, a way to an end. And you know, I can use Photoshop if I don't know how to draw, if I have no sense of beauty, you know, it's not going to, uh, to make me creative. If I'm creative, it will help me. And that's the same. If I'm boring on Facebook, even if I'm still doing top-down, uh, I would say, communication on Twitter or YouTube or contacting, I'm, I, I won't be a social brand. I will look like one. Oh, yeah, I would be on social networks. But it doesn't mean I would have understood how I need to change the way I'm interacting with people. And, you know, how can you know you want a Facebook page or a viral video if you don't even know why? What do you want to do? Do you want to get awareness? Do you want to build a relationship? Do you want, you know, so how can you choose a tool if you don't know the house you want to build? So focus first on your objectives, selling more, generating more traffic, uh, I don't know, gener generating more visibility. Then think about your target and, okay, how can I get this target to do that and, and focus on what you want to offer, the service, the content, and then only then you can pick up the, the right tool. So second trend, content is queer. And uh, we were talking about it just previously, you need content. And the big challenge is attention. You know, you need to get people's attention. But honestly, they don't really care about you. You know, they, are, they have kids, they are watching movies, they are listening to music. So you don't only compete with your other brands or competitors, you're competing against everything people are doing. You want to share their mind every day and you have to compete against their kids, you have to compete against MTV, you have to, to compete against the movies they are going to watch tonight. And this is what we, we have been doing for years, you know. We have a budget, we have a target, and, yeah, let's, let's reach the target. And this is a Trojan War, you know, it was not very successful. Uh, people were inside the city protecting themselves. It's like the same as the consumer, it doesn't listen to you. And suddenly, something worked. And it was not about having more money and more budget and bigger billboard. I know you have a very big billboard in, in Russia. Uh, it works too, but there is also ways that can be complementary. And this is what you need to do. Having the permission, deserving people's attention to deliver them with something. So, funny thing is, we talk a lot about brand content recently. And it's nothing but new. If you look at Guinness Book, it was a gift from Guinness, a beer, for its most loyal customer. And it was 1955. Uh, in France, we have Guide Michelin, about restaurants, I guess it's the same here in Russia. And yeah, it was a gift to uh, the best, I would say, buyer of, of uh, buyers. And even the world soap opera come from the 1930. And Procter & Gamble realized, oh, if I do a program that is cool, the whole family is going to listen, then I can put my ad uh, uh, on top of it. So they already realized a long time ago, if you are interesting, people will listen to you, and then it's easier uh, to market to them. So if we look at digital, one of the first brands to rediscover the power of brand content was BMW in the US. Normally, you know, you put a bit of your money in the movie, and then you buy a lot of media to promote the movie. But they realized, why not put all the money in the movie? So we are going to make so good advertising that we don't need to buy space, because people will share it. And of course, with this money, they were able to have James Brown, to have Madonna, and it was like nearly 12 or 15 minutes movie, not like 30 seconds. But it was so brilliant, so nice, that so good movie makers that, yeah, 
it was shared more than 100 million times, so much more than what they could have paid with their media budget. So, it's interesting. Now, if we look in the luxury industry recently, there have been a lot of, of nice experiments. Like, for example, Dior is producing a lot of small movies directly for the internet. So, they could not afford to buy the media time on TV because it's like seven or eight or ten minutes. But online, you know, if you are interesting, there is no really limit for, for the format. So, you have a lot of different episodes with Marion Cotillard, for example. But okay, let's say video is too expensive. So at VMH, they have this very nice blog called Nowness, and it's a blog. They are sharing great things they find on the internet. And they're not, not only talking about their brand. And how do they do that? They have press makers. So they invited inspiring movie maker, designer, architects, and say, you know what? We have this great blog, it's like a magazine. We want you to share what inspires you the most. We want you to share it with our customers. And I wasn't even surprised. Like one day they even uh, uh, were showing a movie from Chanel, which is from the competition. But it was fine to them. Say, so, yeah, it was a great movie. We're happy to, to, to show it to, uh, to our reader. And now Chanel, even them, they have a, a blog called Chanel News. Uh, Joe has a, a Joe Mark. So you see, they are starting to realize maybe in addition of buying media, they can become a media themselves. It can be more interesting to people, and they need to have regular, updated content to, to get their interest. And it's interesting, like when we talk about viral marketing, so the idea is that if you give great content to someone, you will share it with other people for free. We see always about funny video on YouTube and say, yeah, but we're luxury, you know, it's different. I don't want to do that. I'm not totally okay. I think it's harder, you need to be more cautious, but if you can find a way to make something beautiful or a bit surprising, does not have to be funny. We could work very well. And Channel, which is one of the most, I would say, uh, 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 famous uh, quality premium brand, has even them, they have, they have uh, uh, been okay to the viral marketing. So, Thomas, maybe if you can show the, the video. Oh, no. oh, okay. Uh, you see? Yeah. So, it was shown on, on the Nowness from the image blog. So. I'll just show you a small part and I'll let you check them out later. So it's like stop motion animation. Directly using the product. Very unconventional way to uh, to shoot content. So the, let's say the brother had to deal with it by saying they were very unhappy about 
the backlash. So take some risks, but you know, still remember who you are and don't go too far. Uh, okay, content is great, but engagement is better. And uh, you know, you need to create what I call contentious experience. I think you know the day of message is dead. Message, you know, you send stuff to people. And maybe they listen. Experience is much better. You make something that is interactive, people game, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, so um, so you need to make something that is uh, interactive, uh, that is useful uh, for the people. Uh, and uh, okay, so I was saying interactive people. You know, they are used to comment, they are used to like, they are used to do a lot of things. They don't want to be passive with the content. You need to make it useful to them. You know, if they give you your attention. Their attention, you need to compensate them with service, with something interesting, uh, with something valuable. And you know, the more different you will be, the more people will share your content. If you are boring, nobody cares about sending your content to their friends. If you are, wow, did you see how beautiful, did you see how crazy, did you see how funny it is, then people are going to share, uh, to share this. So, for example, if you take Kenzo, uh, you know, Kenzo, one of the perfume is having uh, this uh, flower uh, inside, and now they are like creating those feel of lollipops. And suddenly you go in your city, uh, I think there was one in Moscow, and suddenly you have this feel of lollipops. And it's going to catch your attention. You are going to have a reaction. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't like it, but at least you are going to talk about it. Is it art? Is it advertising? It's interesting. Uh, I don't know if you saw this one from Ralph Lorenz. They made this crazy. Uh, video mapping on their on their shop, and it was like an amazing show, basically. So they are transforming themselves once again as a as a media. Burberry, I will let you check this video. They are totally risking the retail experience. They are thinking their shop needs to become uh, an exhibition. They need to become somewhere where it could be concert, where they need to be animation. You know, e-commerce is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are more choice than you could ever have in a shop. So if you don't make sure your shop is offering something that is worth it, then why would people come? It's easier to go online. So you need to create something like service. You need to create something surprising. And you know, it might not be content, it might be service. And you know Nike, that is this amazing app where basically you can track your performances when you're running. You know, they were selling shoes, and suddenly they're becoming a coach. You were maybe buying one, one pair of shoes every year, suddenly you are connecting with the brand through the, through the app every week when you go running. And it's not information like Nike, it's information like me and how I'm running. So it's much more interesting to me uh, uh, than information about the shoe. Of course, make sure it's really useful. You remember that? It was supposed to help you on Windows? It was very boring. And uh, you know, very often when I see apps from brand, uh, and I think Fur Agency is going to talk about mobile a little later, you know, the problem is it's a website put in, a, in an app. It's still boring. It's not because it's on the mobile that it's really works. And yeah, people might be using Angry Birds instead. So you need to be as interesting as Angry Birds. Don't underestimate the new opinion leader. Uh, I would say, of course, like everybody, you PR or the journalists, but there is a lot of new influentials on blogs, on Twitter, on YouTube. If you take this girl, for example, do you know who she is? So she's Michelle Fan. She's one of the biggest worldwide beauty bloggers. Right? I know in, in, in Russia there's a lot of influential bloggers too. And so she's just sharing like makeup tips. Uh, normal girl, pretty, but they're amazing. You know, at least when she explains something, you feel like you can do it. She's not a model, she's normal. And I just made a small comparison. So if you take Laura on YouTube or Michelle Fan on YouTube, so basically Michelle Fan is alone, she has one channel, Laura has 81. She has generated 687 million views on all of her videos. Laura has generated 100 million. The Wu L'Oreal Worldwide Group, all the brands from L'Oreal together, they generated 100 million views. She alone, a girl, in her living room, talking about makeup, has generated seven times more views than L'Oreal. So it really shows you the power of some of them. She's one of the most successful ones, but 
it's interesting to see that I'm not saying stop doing advertising. There is complementary way in what you are doing, and it might not be only the journalists that are interested. And uh, I think the first ever uh, luxury campaign uh, which I did uh, was for Chanel at the time, so it was kind of a revolution, a luxury brand doing something. This logo was in 2007. Since then, there have been tons of campaigns. Like a lot of brands are, have built a strong relationship with key bloggers in like every country because they realize they continue to do journalists, but there is other influential online. And they are like, so for sometimes like, Offering a very VIP treatment, like for example, Chanel at the time they invited 15 of them to for three days to discover their the unit. So of course there is Twitter too. So cloud is interesting because it's a ranking of the most influential accounts on Twitter. So if you don't know who is more influential than who, then cloud is a, is a good way to uh, to find information. And um, nearly last trend, disruption. I think this is really important for you. Whether you look at, you work in cosmetics, in beauty, in luxury, digital is creating disruption in everything. And you should get ready. If you think there were, there were a lot of change in the last years, believe me, the 10 next year are going to be crazy. This is from 19 to 1950. You know, uh, all the boats were fighting each other to go across the Atlantic. So you knew your competition. Oh, this boat is going faster and so on. This is what happened in 1939. So only there was a plane on top of the world. Not the same technology, not the same business model, and basically all the transatlantic transportation for passengers collapsed in a few years because everybody preferred to take a flight that was much faster. So, who is going to be your Boeing 340? There is someone you might even not know that is preparing to kill your business model, that is going to kill your margin, that is going to change the way you are doing business because of digital. Uh, I gave you a few examples. This is BlackBerry, this is a stock market. 2008 on the left, 2012 on the right. So who wants to be BlackBerry? What did they do? They just missed the app revolution. They have a, still a very nice phone, but they didn't believe in apps. They just lost nearly all the market. This is Uber. It's a very cool application on mobile that is already implemented in a few cities in the US and now in France and it's probably going to come to Russia. You know, taxi in Paris is awful. You, 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 you don't know when they are available, you cannot do like in Russia, you, know, you, you, know, you have your hand, it's, it's like it's super awful. So don't leave it, just make this app. You know exactly where they are on the map. Uh, you can rent the driver, so if they are really bad, you know, they will know at uh, Uber. And so, so they just resort the whole experience, and they are doing amazing, uh, 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 amazing business um, uh, now. This is Airbnb. Uh, if you are in the hotel business, it's your competition. You might not even know who is Airbnb, but basically Airbnb let anyone rent his room or his apartment to someone else. It's very easy. And basically, there are 10 million nights booked since 2008. So 10 million nights that people did not book in a hotel, they book at some other place. Every time I'm going to New York, I'm using Airbnb because I can find the right apartment in the right block for a pretty average, uh, reasonable, uh, reasonable price. And uh, now there are more than 7,000 flats just in Paris. They are one and a half years old in Paris. So it's crazy how fast they are growing and they are damaging their hotel business. And this is Kickstarter. Uh, it's a platform of crowdfunding. So basically, if I have an idea for a product or an exhibition or something I want to launch, but I don't have the money, I can go there and tell people, you know, pre-buy the product. This is what I'm going to build, but I don't have the money. Buy it in advance, then with the money I will build it and make it available for you. So someone had an idea to create a watch using the iPod Nano. So they wanted to leverage $15,000. Through the platform, they were able to leverage $942,000. So, basically, someone with an ID now is becoming a, a, a leading brand of watch in just a few months, using the strength and the power of the community online. So, you know, maybe you have a competitor that is going to launch a cosmetic brand tomorrow because you can leverage $2 million through this platform. For example. And so you know, last year they were able to raise 274 million dollars 
for 18,000 projects. If you know the Sundance Festival, 10% of the movie of the Sundance Festival were financed through Kickstarter, this platform. 10% of those movies. Uh, and now to finish, um, you know, if you are in the luxury or beauty industry, you have probably retail uh, uh, or shops to, to sell uh, your products. So, you know, for e-commerce, uh, um, it's not, uh, it's an easy competition. They don't, uh, e-commerce don't have to, to rent all those shops, they don't have to pay all those salesmen. So it's pretty tough to compete against e-commerce if you're retailers. And this is in the, in the UK, for example, just up there we're selling like, photo equipment. There are 187 shops that just close. And there is so many more closes, closes of, uh, closing of the time. But this is nothing. Is there anyone from our Star Trek in the room <coughs> who believe in teleportation? Come on, come on. Oh, there's one, yeah. So, what will happen if brands could teleport their products directly to the customer? You won't like that? That would be cool. You will, uh, you will, yeah, you will save a lot of time, it will be like super useful, especially in Russia where sometimes it's not easy to deliver on the other side of the country. But it's already possible. Have you heard about 3D printing? No? Maybe? Some of you? Okay, 3D printing is exactly like a printer, but instead of printing on paper, it's, you use a, uh, you download a 3D model or something, you know, like a computer file, and it's redesigning exactly what you have downloaded. So, for example, here it's printing a, a tower for a chess pad. Uh, here, I don't know what it's printing. So it's like recreating uh, a product based on the, on the, um, I would say, computer file. And, you know, jewelry, for example. But half of IKEA, I can print, basically, it's plastic product. You know, I want a glass. I can print it, it's very easy. So it's much easier for me to print it in my living rooms and going to the shop, taking my car, finding a place to park, queuing in the shop. So all the intermediaries in this business model are going to have a big competition. And you think, you know, this is a 3D printed bra and it's on your specific dimension. So you scan your breasts and then they are able to design you a bespoke printed Drop. And this was at the Fashion Week in Paris, the last Fashion Week. This is 3D printed sh uh, skirts. So basically, some of those shapes are not even manufer ma uh, manufacturable through other ways than 3D printing, because you can design very complicated shapes. And this is Dita Vantis, and it's a bespoke 3D made. Skirts. So basically, they, they, they conceive everything through 3D, and maybe, okay, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you check uh, the video, but it's totally, uh, I would say, flexible, and it's really like uh, taking care of, uh, of her shape. So now, the cheapest 3D printer costs $1,500, so it's very cheap. Just wait for HP to offer one for 200 it's going to be crazy, but basically meaning that someone with an ID tomorrow will be able to distribute this product worldwide in zero seconds. Remember the music? How fast it is to download any music or find any music? Tomorrow it's going to be the same some of the objects. I'm not saying very sophisticated, very rare products, but for basic, plastic, whatever, it will be like, you know, in no in time. Just imagine if people can scan your product and they can counterfeit or copy them on a global scale like they do with music or video. This is exactly what's going to happen with some of the most basic uh, product uh, in the future. And even Obama is talking about 3D printing. So even him, he says that the potential is to revolutionize the way we make almost everything. So I'm not saying he's always right, but uh, even if he is taking notice, there might uh, be uh, something. And it might seem crazy, but they are even more crazier. Because now we can do bioprinting. We can print organs with real cells. And this is what they are testing in the US. Now they are able, you see like uh, the picture on the left, it's a bioprinter. So it takes seven hours and they are able to print a bladder with your own cell and to put it in someone. So it's still R&D, but there is already someone living with a, not artificial, because it's real cells, bioprinted bladder and cells. So maybe, you know, we are going to become all seaborgs. And if you did not get upgraded like your, uh, like your colleagues, 
Are your boss is going to complain why you don't have like the new, uh, the new chip or, or, or whatever. Uh, but uh, you know, it's a lot of change. And the last one, it's two slides. The future of social is going to be zero. I think one of the key issues now with social networks is we try to have one single message for all the fans, all the members. But you know, if you have one million fans on Facebook, they are very different. They might be super hardcore fans that want news every 10 minutes. They will be maybe uh, just non existing customer or future customer. So, you know, do you have Alzheimer? Why are you always saying everything 200 or 300 times? Uh, why are you always spreading the same message to everyone? There is better ways than that, you know? Uh, if you take Flipboard, for example, it's an app for the iPad where basically you tell the website you like. You connect it to your Twitter and Facebook, and it creates a magazine only for you. Only with the info from your friends, from your, your favorite website, and it's updated in real time. So if people are getting used to this kind of personalized information, what do you think they're going to think about your brochure? Or about a normal magazine? And the idea, and this is my conclusion, is are you ready for real-time marketing? And, uh, Thomas, if you can just show the video, I will be done with that. Are you going to be able to create bespoke experience in real time to your customer? social media, you can respond to them fast, really fast. See how customer collaboration can help you at Cisco.com. So of course you have to find the right range between privacy, invasion, and I would say personalized service. But yeah, it's, it's probably what you're going to, to be uh, uh, doing. So I could have probably explained 20 years of trends, but I think, as you can see, there would be a lot of change. There would be a lot of opportunities for uh, the brands that are going to, to innovate. And now, 